Hello everyone, I'm Sula, host of Sula's Big Adventures, with another episode, and it's a good one, because today is September 26, 2022, and Jupiter is at opposition. So I've got out my 12-inch Schmidt Cassegrain to look at it, and not only is it at opposition, but it's the closest it's been to Earth in 76 years. So it looks pretty clear, and we're going to get some great looks at it with this telescope. So I'll be back when it gets a little darker and Jupiter gets a little higher. While we're waiting for the clouds to clear and for Jupiter to get a little higher, because it's best to look at it when it's highest in the sky, but it's also very much dependent on atmospheric turbulence. Um, but we'll look at it a long time and wait for the turbulence, if any, to calm down. Last night it was very calm, very little turbulence, and I'm hoping it'll be the same tonight. But I just wanted to explain what opposition means, something I forgot to say on my episode about observing the planets. It just means that the planet is directly opposite the sun. So the Earth is in between the sun and the planet, and that's the best time to look at it because that's when it's the closest. So Jupiter is in opposition tonight, and it's the best time to observe Jupiter tonight when it's in opposition. While waiting for Jupiter to get above the house so there are no heat plumes coming off the house, I've just been looking at Saturn, and it's incredible. I think it's the best look at Saturn I've ever had in my whole life. There is no atmospheric turbulence. It's unbelievable. The Cassini division is so well defined. I think I can see the C ring. I can see the shadow being cast by the ring on the surface. I can see the bands on the surface and it's, it's incredible. I can't wait to look at Jupiter. I hope it stays like this. So I'll check in with you in a minute. Wow, I think this will go down as one of those nights in your career as an amateur astronomer that you never forget. There was practically no atmospheric turbulence and Jupiter was just so clear. It's so big that you look at it and you're blind for a few minutes afterwards. But wow, it was just, it's phenomenal. It's just so big and bright and I saw eight bands and it was just so colorful and beautiful and bright and I won't forget this night anytime soon. It's just beautiful. Jupiter at Opposition 2022. Hello, I'm out here with my 12 inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain, even though it's going to rain in about 30 minutes, if I can ever believe astrofaric ever again after it's lied to me so many times. But actually I can see that it's gonna rain soon. So why do I have my 12 inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain out? Well, I wanted to tell you about a discovery I just made. I bought this telescope because I got aperture fever and. I'm in a dark sky site, and so why not? And uh, I intended it for visual use, which is what I mostly use it for. It's a fantastic telescope for visual. Uh, it's a little difficult for astrophotography because I don't have the equatorial wedge, so I never really considered it. But after I made the video on observing the planets, one of the viewers, Christopher, asked me if I was going to be making any photos from my video when Saturn was at opposition, and I said, sure. Um, so I was just using a number 62 adapter to put the camera on the back of the telescope, and so there was no magnification. The telescope was just becoming the lens. And so I asked Orion how to 
put the Barlow on so I could get some magnification and they, they couldn't tell me, but I finally, with some tinkering today, because it's overcast and I don't have anything else to do, I took the Teleview diagonal off and I removed the two inch to one and a quarter adapter and I put it directly into the visual back and then I first tried a two Tom Barlow that I have and I was able to achieve focus. So then I thought, well, why not go for the three Tom Barlow? So I put my Teleview three Tom Barlow into the one and a quarter adapter, which is going directly into the visual back. And then my T, adapt T ring, of course, and then my Sony camera. And I was able to <laughs> focus on that person's house. I could see in their window three miles away at least and so wow what a shame I didn't know you could do that when I was filming Saturn at opposition I did film Jupiter at opposition but just with the camera on the telescope no magnification and now we're about five or six days past Jupiter being in opposition but it's still very close to Earth and very big and bright and as soon as it clears up I plan to try to film it again and uh, now it should be a lot bigger picture than, it, than my first result which was tiny. So uh, as soon as it clears up I'll do that and show you my results. We're a few days past Jupiter being in opposition and it's overcast today and so I won't be able to look at Jupiter this evening, but take a look at these beautiful fall colors here in Dark Skies Forever, Montana. Beautiful. They'll be gone soon, so don't be jealous. <laughs> the winter will start any day and last for six months. <laughs> I'm just looking at Jupiter with my 12 inch Meech Mick Hasegrain with an 11 millimeter eyepiece. I think I like that better than using the three time Barlow. I can make Jupiter bigger with the Barlow, but I think it's clearer with this 11 millimeter. I did try the three millimeter, but it just, just doesn't work unless conditions are superb and they're not. There's a little bit of turbulence tonight, so not as good as when Jupiter was at opposition, but I feel very lucky that I had that experience. I got back here to be with my 12 inch Meade Schmidt cat's grain and see Jupiter at opposition and it just happened to be incredibly calm. And there was, uh, the great red spot was visible. I don't know if it was the same night as when Jupiter was at opposition, but um, close in time, if not the same night, and then a couple nights later, I watched a transit of Ganymede. I watched the whole thing from one side of Jupiter to the other. It was very, very cool to watch, spectacular. And the seeing was superb. It's not as good tonight, but I did figure out how to attach my camera with this three Tom Barlow. So I got some video with it and I'll see how that turned out and show you that. And so I feel very lucky I got to see Jupiter so well. I'll never forget that no matter how the video or pictures turn out. Okay, and now I'm going to process some video I made of Jupiter into a picture. Here are the videos I took of Jupiter and um, disclaimer, I'm a complete novice at planetary <laughs> imaging, but 
I'm going to process this last one by opening pip, which will convert this mp4 file into an avi file. So just click planetary, and then do processing, which sounds like the 14th Amendment due process. Ha uh ha. -huh. And then start processing. And it's a lot of frames, so this is going to take a while. So I'll be back soon. Okay, PIP has converted the MP4 into an AVI file. So next I'm going to open AutoStacker. And open that file. And after you open it, then you click Analyze. And that'll take a minute. It's going to analyze them. And then uh, it gives you this graph. It shows you the quality of the different frames. And I choose 50%. Um, and I don't drizzle because I think it's pretty well sampled. But like I said, I'm a novice, so... I have no idea if that's right, but all I know is next you place an AP grid, make sure it covers the whole planet, and I don't do anything fancy. I just hit stack, and then it's going to stack it into a single TIFF file. And once it's finished doing that, then I'm going to open up um, Registax. So it'll take just a minute to stack it. Okay, now oh, I'm going to open Registax and in this AP50 file and it gives you two pictures I, I guess you picked <laughs> this one I really don't know but it looks good to me I don't ever use this auto stretch okay it looks pretty darn good look at that there's the great red spot and there's Ganymede pretty neat huh this is the part I really don't know I think you just experiment I, I don't know some people said mess with these buttons but I think the colors look pretty good it has some vignetting because I was using a three times Barlow but I'm hoping to get rid of that with these wavelets and all I know is you just keep clicking until it looks good so that's what I'm going to do, and oh my gosh, look at that, I got rid of the vignetting. I think if you hit these buttons too much, it starts to look tawdry, but that looks pretty darn good to me. should stop while I'm ahead because I don't want something bad to happen. This looks really good. Okay. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go with it. So then I just hit save image. And I save it as a JPEG. You can save it as a TIFF, but when I tried to open it in Photoshop to do more things, it just made it look hideous so I'm just going to save it as a JPEG and call it Jupiter with 
Red Spot and Ganymede. I'm not going to save it there. I'm going to save it here. I already have one named that, so that will be one. Save, and that's it. Okay, that's the end of this uh, demonstration of processing a planetary image. Bye-bye. So, hope you enjoyed this episode on Jupiter at Opposition. I'll see you in the next episode. Until 